Mr. Stafford's reinstatement runs from midnight. He's been chief for the past two hours. Ah. And uh, who may you be? Diane Lewis, sir. Your new secretary. Good morning. John Stafford. I gather we got a new police authority chairman. Yes, uh, Alec Radcliffe. But Major Davis retired. I suppose you heard he had a heart attack. And if these maniacs said they planted an atom bomb, what would you do? Evacuate the city? If I believed them, what would you do, Council? Hold your budget meeting under the table, just in case. You don't have to explain to them why their community charge has gone up. Martin got a job yet? Teaching chemistry at a comprehensive. He got over the blacklisting? No, he's hoping to get liberty to take up the case against the Avalon Trust. <laughs> no one to alienate. Try the wife. Oh, Tim's not here. Where is he, anyway? Test drive in the Spitfire. Oh. Quick couple of circuits of Norfolk. We were going to do that together Saturday. Fowler, you're chairman of the Association of Chief Police Officers, ACPO, to us. Now, you've already made it very clear what you think is wrong with uh, modern policing, and I quote, it's in the nature of mothers to be loved and of policemen to be feared. That's right. Uh, you go on to say, the intellectual Bobby we are increasingly urged to recruit, a rolled-up degree filling his truncheon pocket, is an object of ridicule to the professional criminal, and therefore of little use to the public. Isn't there a danger in that view, Mr Fowler, that that attitude is going to make you recruit more thugs than thinkers? It doesn't mean I employ Barbary apes, Miss Caldwell. The job requires intelligence. The question is whether it's the type of intelligence you can measure by exams. Didn't you have to pass any exams to get to the top? School of experience, Miss Caldwell, you'll find there's no substitute for that. Uh, John Stafford, as a top policeman with a degree in your truncheon pocket, your approach is slightly different. But doesn't Mr Fowler have a point? The crime rate is as high as it's ever been, and your liberal style of policing may well not be helping. What do you see as the main reason for the decline in public confidence in the police? Well, I don't know what I've done with my degree certificate, but it's not in my truncheon pocket. But then, um, neither is my truncheon. We all know how corrupting power can be. The more corrupt we become as a force, the more we're trusted by the professional criminal and feared by the public. You can't fear what you trust, and you can't trust what you fear. And you don't solve crime with aphorisms. Gentlemen, here you are, two of the top policemen in Britain, sitting here bickering between yourselves about how the job should be done. Surely policing has become too important to be left to the police. It's too important to be left to accountants and politicians, or Barbary apes. I'm sorry, we really must stop it there. We actually have run out of time. So, uh, Colin Fowler, John Stafford, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. On uh, next week's programme, we'll be looking at the problem of homelessness. So do join us for that special investigation. Until then, good night. Looking for something? Yeah, the old malt house. This is River Reach, isn't it? What's their name? What? People you're looking for, what's their name? Just says the old malt house. I know what it says. What I want to know is what you want them for. Why? Well, don't get clever. Anyone can write an address on a bit of paper. Charlie 41 from Victor X-ray. Attend reported break-in at 123 River Reach, Roxham. They advertise for a gardener. That's what I do, gardens and groundwork, all right? I'd say he does houses, wouldn't you, Paul? You run out of luck tonight, pal. Someone was home. Didn't reckon on that, did you? Or on us. Up against the car. <coughs>
You've got no right to stop me. You're not the police. You want me questioned? You call them. But you can get that bloody thing out of my way for a start. You ought to stand for Parliament, John. They'd stand for you. That's what you need, is it, Colin? Another politician telling you how to police East Yorkshire? <laughs> I can see you now up there on your iron legs in front of the camera, preaching to the nation. I'm back on the beat, dropping in for a couple with the old ladies looking after lost kiddies. I wonder why you all bother to go beyond sergeant. Sergeants don't get listened to. Think you do? At least they know where I stand. <laughs> where I stand, not where you or the Home Office or ACPO say I should. Could have been a stockbroker. I've got a degree in economics. I chose to earn my living as a gardener. Tonight I realised something and it shocked me. That choice has made me a member of the suspect class. Mm, not with us. Not this time. We're not going to prefer any charges. Can't see you cruising around the estate after you've done a robbery. It didn't stop them putting a dog on me. What are you going to do about it? Sue Carbon Securities for damages. I'll report to my governor. They ought to be done for assault. Come on. We'll give you a lift home. Councillor Morpeth is here, sir. Ask it away. Mr. Stafford will see you in a moment. I uh, did ask you to wait. One of the advantages of sitting on the police committee, Mr. Stafford, is access to the chief constable. Please, um, sit down. How can I help you? Last night, a man named Taylor tried to break into my house. I disturbed him. He ran and was caught by our security patrol. The police came and took him away. I learned this morning that he was later released without being charged. I happen to have read the report, and there's no connection between him and the incident. His connection with the incident is that he was responsible for it. You saw him? I saw someone. How did you know it was Mr Taylor? I told you. He was caught by our patrol. He then tried to escape. And they set the dog on him. We have had seven burglaries in the last three months. Mr. Stafford, we live in constant fear. Your men have done absolutely nothing. Given our limited resources, we have done and are doing all we can. I know your resources. I vote on them. Then you should know how much time and manpower I can allocate. May I remind you whose properties have been broken into? Sir Jeremy Scott, David Eames. And they require privileged attention, do they? That attitude is precisely why we employ Calvin Securities. You're at liberty to employ anyone you wish, Mrs Morpeth. But Taylor has grounds for a civil action against Calvin, and if he does sue, personally, I wish him the best of luck. I see. The weather in the Eastland region mainly dry with isolated showers developing later. Minimum temperatures of 8 degrees centigrade. This is Radio Eastland 194. Thank <laughs> you. 
You mustn't go away. We have a job to do. We're chosen. You know that. station of that off-duty officer now. Speak to X-ray to Quebec Tango 1. Your message receiving immediate attention. What are you thinking? Glad it wasn't me, Sam. Where will I find B.S. Powers? He's in the CID officer. Thank you. I hadn't seen the boy's description then, sir. I didn't come on duty till 10. But you saw the van stop and pick him up, didn't you? God, a 14-year-old lad. And you didn't even take the number. There wasn't any reason to, sir. I was off duty. There's no such bloody thing. A cop is a copper all the time, Powers, and if you're not, you better start thinking about another career, or at least another force. Didn't it occur to you he'd be vulnerable? A boy that age. Hitchhiking in the middle of nowhere. Well, a lot of them do it, sir. <laughs> Funny thing is, I nearly stopped for him myself. Wish I had now. So do I. Sir, Colvin Security's personnel list. Uh, Brian and Ralph. Now, they're the ones who stopped Mr. Taylor. Ralph rang a little bell, so I looked him up. We've got a file on him as thick as the phone book. There's all complaints and allegations, nothing provable. He used to be a DC on C Division. Left the force about a yard and a half in front of GBH charges. Kicking prisoners. Good. Follow that one up, Arthur. Right, sir. I can look at special branch files whenever I want to. Well, you can, but if you disclose their contents to anyone without proper authority, you're committing a disciplinary offence. Regulation 6, yeah, I know. It's a question of how you interpret it. I'm sorry, Anne. If I let you tell Martin what we're holding on the Avalon Trust, and he uses it in court, we'll both have abused our positions for personal reasons. Winning a case against the Avalon Trust isn't personal. That's a public service. From our point of view, yes. Technically, it's what Sir Ian Harnett was doing for what no doubt seemed to him perfectly good reasons, and we went after him for it. He got nowhere because he's an MP. We tried. And so did he. The difference is that he's the director of a company that has the power to ruin people's lives. Harnett had Martin blacklisted to get back at me. Talk about the police abusing their positions. The Avalon Trust does not play by the rules. But we have to. I've opened a file on them. I don't know any other chief who's done it. I just want an unofficial look at what we've got. I've told you, Anne. You can look, but you cannot disclose anything you find. Oh, excuse me, sir. It's time we were going. It's all right, Arthur. I'll be with you in a minute. Right. 
Anne, since you can't tell Martin what's in that file, for your own peace of mind, don't look. Economies agreed at the last budgetary review, I'd like to ask our chief how he justifies his current proposal to spend further sums on an independent survey into community attitudes to help determine future community policing requirements. Well, I thought it'd be reasonable first to find out what that community wants. We know what it wants, Chief Constable. It wants hooligans and thieves caught and prosecuted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I thought perhaps it would prefer the cheaper version. A decline in the growth rate of thieves and hooligans. Mass sterilisation. <laughs> Communities that care. Environments that please. Social agencies that support. Authorities that repair and renew. An ethic that unites. That's like sand. Crime can't get its roots down into that. What we've got is a money-grubbing, penny-pinching society that says it's all right to be greedy weak and shameful to be dependent, and wet to be concerned. I've seen so-called crime prevention films on television advising people to put bolts on their doors and install locks on their windows so that the thief, and I quote, will go elsewhere. That's not crime prevention, that's crime relocation. It's the castle mentality, it's medieval. Elsewhere is where you live. That's loam soil, any weed will sprout in it, and I don't want the job of cutting them down. I'd rather be planting. Marking? Getting ready for the lawyers, remember? I've got an appointment in the morning and I want to be on top of it. Why torts? Negligence. The note of my application said troublemaker, right? Now, if we can prove that the Avalon Trust knew that that would make me lose the job... Isn't this all a bit... obsessive? Thanks. Wouldn't be if John Stafford were doing it, would it? Oh, no, he opens a file on the Avalon Trust and he's a hero. I ask you what's in it, I'm a neurotic. I told you. Showing confidential files is a disciplinary offence for John or me. We could both lose our jobs over it. Join the club, so Ian Bloody Harnett lost me my job and he got away with it. You could look, couldn't you? I did. There's nothing. Oh, empty file. Nothing that would help your case, all right? In your judgment? Yes. Anne? You're the most honest person I know. And you're the world's worst liar. Jumps out of third if you press hard. Remember when I tried it? Wish it was through the gearbox. You! I scraped it, you put it back. This job you've got, I hope it's not in a garage. Ipswich Marina. Doing what? Dogs bodying. That's for the summer. Don't panic, Dad, I'm still going to university. Be quiet at home. Empty cell syndrome. Very funny. I'll tell you something. 
Those three weeks we spent together working on the car, I enjoyed that more than anything I can remember. It was okay. It was more than okay. We haven't spent that much time together since you were in junior school. Yeah. Your first six weeks off in ten years and you and Mum go away for three of them. I don't get too much paid suspension, Tim. I need time with her, too. Get it now, won't you? Me out the way. You're the one leaving, not us. He's not answering any radio call. Cops, aren't they? Do what they like. Not in my force, they bloody can't. This was supposed to be a test drive! It is, but you'll do 90 at 5,000 revs. Where the bloody hell do you think you were going? And what kind of speed do you think you were doing? Closer to 80, I'd have said. What's your excuse? Late? I don't care how late. You? Yes, my name's Stafford. I'm the Chief Constable of Eastland. I want to see your General Manager. Do you have an appointment? No. Mr. Calvin? Yes? There's a policeman to see you. Tell him to wait. He said that you It's please. all right. I heard. Any pattern, Tom? All weeknights. Cleaning and outs. No vandalising. None after 1am. Two before 10pm. Five forced entries, ground floor window. Six if you include Monday's attempted. Two backdoor entries. Occupies away seven times on the premises once. That was the aborted one. Cash, antiques, jewellery taken in every case, all portable stuff, all end up in Amsterdam. They know what they're doing. And none of it's turned up yet. I can put more time in if you want. Not the great train robbery, but they are influential people, ma'am. Mr. Calvin, we'll see you now. Through here. Thank you. You operate with my consent, Mr. Calvin. And I'm not referring to your legal rights. I'm talking about practicalities. As I interpret the law... You're not hearing me, Mr. Calvin. You take one step beyond what I consider lawful, and I'll shut you down overnight. Nobody. Not Mrs. Morpeth, not Sir Jeremy Scott. Nobody will do a thing about it. If you were a business, I'd take you to the police for that threat. If I was a business, I wouldn't care what you'd do. It's because your interest's making profits out of security, and mine's security at any cost, that I do care. You don't provide a service I can't match. Then why am I in business? It doesn't have to be private. I'd be glad to train your men. I'd do a better job of it. 
and I'd do a better job of choosing them. I can't sack a man because you say he's unsuitable. I'm not asking you to. I'm asking you to vet your recruits more thoroughly in the first place, as I have. You've got access to the police national computer. If I had that... Well, you haven't. And you never will have. Wouldn't help you anyway. Only shows up criminal convictions. It doesn't spot tendencies. Only people do that. I recruit policemen, Mr. Calvin, not mercenaries. There's a big difference. Think about it. And if I were you, I'd get a security lock on that window. I've seen you before, haven't I? Somewhere out there. It's all Shamoz. You're Terry Wogan, aren't you? I'm Gary. Gary Leonard. They know my name all right. One of my thoughts goes into everyone's mind. But well, they won't find us here, Gary, because we're leaving. I'm taking you home with me. Don't you live here? Every officer in the force will be getting one of these in the next few days. I don't see the point, sir. They'll be asked to list these items in order of priority and add their comments. They will match them against the results of the public survey. Proving what? Ideally, that we want the same things the community does. Though, personally, I think we're in for a few surprises. And if we don't put approachability above ability to detect serious crime, and the public do, then um, we'll have to become more approachable, won't we? We need the right type of man as an inspector of constabulary. We have a pretty crew of One third diplomat, one third administrator, and one third policeman. That's not an inspector of constabulary. That's a chief constable, which they already are. There's a name not on this list that ought to be. Huh? John Stafford. Oh, please. It's a serious suggestion. Granted, he hasn't been a chief very long, but he's learned the job faster than anyone I know. Classroom solution. Make the enfant terrible prefect. Gets what he wants. Quite. An efficient, well-run force serving the community. What we all want, isn't it? He's forceful enough. Anyway, even if I were to agree, the Home Secretary wouldn't. Whatever the proportion of diplomacy required for the inspectorate, Mr. Stafford would be thought deficient in it. It isn't just John. Eastern region covers East Midlands and East Yorkshire. Whoever replaces me is going to have to handle John Stafford, Peter Files, and Colin Fowler. Saltpeter, charcoal, and sulfur. You know what you get when you mix them. Hence the third name on your list. The Home Secretary's preferred candidate, I might add. Oh, with all due respect to the Home Secretary, that would be striking the match. Are you awake? Can't sleep. Do you want a pill? Take more than that. 
Why don't we do it, Liz? Why don't we just go for the money like everyone else? I could have a security directorship tomorrow. Top firm, 80,000 a year, car expenses. We could have a boat. Cottage in France. Anything we want. Who'd be a public servant in a privately owned world? I was hoping he'd bring that up. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. An off-duty DS named Powers passed that missing boy hitchhiking yesterday. Something I should have been told about before I left, by the way. Well, the boy wasn't attacked until after you'd gone. The missing person report had been filed by then. It didn't warrant your attention, then. I don't tell you everything I get on overnight CIDs. Well, from now on, you will. I want to know everything that happens. Yes. Uh, Calvin's duty rosters for the past three months. I've underlined the dates of the break-ins there. Ralph and O'Brien. Not enough for a search warrant. I said we had an excuse to pull them in, though. Shake the tree. I see they're on again tonight. Yes, ma'am. Can't park here. Shift it. I'm waiting for someone. And who might that be? Mate of mine. No law against that, is it? Don't get smart with me, son. What's his name? <laughs> Stuffed. Arts. Well, the way together, shall we? Oh. What do you think you're doing? Your bloody job. I'd say section 42, wouldn't you, Dave? Hey? Offences against the Persons Act. What's that in his pocket, Sarge? Oh. Offensive weapon. Oh, and uh, he was the one I was waiting for. All the boy for yellow vans, alleged drunk driving. Better get on with it. Yeah, Frank. C E W eight three nine X. Thanks, Margaret. Oh, Mum, you were right. O'Brien has given his Ralph for the River Reach jobs. Dates, times, the lot. Do you offer him? Concealing. I said we'd want to help with the recoveries. Well, can he give it? Well, he's given us two or three names. We'll get a result. You make it sound easy, Jim. Persuasive lad is DS Powers, Mum. I wouldn't be surprised if he let O'Brien get the impression we'd got all we needed on Ralph. Rudyard, can I have a word with you, please, sir? Ooh. All right, mate. I'll just take it easy, all right? OK? Now I'm going to go. All right, no, no problem. I'm going. Easy.
Charlie 1 2 to Victor X ray. And following suspect vehicle, yellow Bedford van, registration Tango Echo Whiskey 839er X ray. Man with shotgun has young lad hostage, appears to be an armed abduction. Understood. Technical firearms group stand by. Containment only. Authority to arm. Charlie 24 and Charlie 39, immediate standby armed incident. Charlie 12 in pursuit of yellow Bedford van, index Tango Echo Whiskey 839 X ray on eastern section of Ben Street over. Charlie 39, you have authority to arm out. Charlie 1 2 to Victor X ray. Target now at Old Westfield Mental Hospital and has entered premises. Am following. Mr. Ratchard, can I have a word with you, please? Go away! Oh, come on, Ken. You remember me? We talked to your house. Yeah, well, what did you want to come here for, anyway? I live here! Uh, two nearest mobiles and DS powers. Yes, he's learned his lesson. Too bad we're not a school. Silver Command? Forward post on its way, ma'am. Just need to know who you want to be in charge. Who's the division? Uh, Alan DeHaan, Phil Bailder, ma'am. Ask Phil to do it. Duty negotiator. Bob Morrison, ma'am, already alerted. Right. We need a psychiatrist, too, I should think, and, uh, and an ambulance. And I want that hospital designated a no flying zone. Uh, no light aircraft, no helicopters within one mile. Tech services, ma'am. Do we need lights and cameras? Oh, yeah, yeah, both. And probe bikes. Press have been on, ma'am. Ongoing incident. Uh, armed man with hostage. Armed police deployed. No more than that. Tell the press officer. Right, Jim, what do we know about him? Oh, well, ma'am, his name's Rudyard. He's got a mental history. We don't know what for. We're checking that out now. And the gun is licensed. Thank you, Jim. Diane! Sir? What's this? Well, Mrs. Stewart left those for you, sir. She came in about half an hour ago. Said to tell you it was what you wanted. Everything. Get your coffee now, sir.
DS Powers is maintaining contact, Mom. No, all I want to do Keeping is him calm. I've contacted the health authority. Plan to the building and an architect on their way. FSU with you shortly. It's a large building. I'm going to need a lot of men to box him in. All right, well, let me have the numbers. But just remember, this is a containment operation, and I want to know as soon as the negotiator gets there. Yes, Mom. Now, according to firearms, we licensed Mr. Rudyard's gun six months ago. According to his neighbours, he's been in and out of mental hospital for the past four years. Yeah, I want a word with whoever handled that application. Well, it's not their fault if the health authorities won't give us access to medical records. He should have been properly questioned. Invaded Rudyard's privacy. Well, you consent to that when you apply to own a lethal weapon. Why not ask the neighbours? They're first in the firing line. We issue 5,000 new certificates every year. All with my name on. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. you can clear that paper mountain off my desk. You've made your point. Thank you. nice here. Good grub, nurses, a lot. Saturday night was card night. There's a telly in a corner. Tom's bed. Walls. Oh, dizzies. My bed here. Good place this was. If he didn't have a gun, he'd have a knife. That's not what I'm saying, Liz. He's got a gun. And he's got it because his GP couldn't tell my firearms department he was mentally unstable. Telling you that would have been an abuse of privilege. We wouldn't be asking for complete medical records, just a simple negative check. Does this patient have a history of mental illness that might disqualify him or her from carrying a shotgun license? Tick yes or no? It's not a judgment a GP can make. How about, uh... Does this patient have a history of mental illness? And well, that's worse. It begs the question of what constitutes mental illness. Is he dangerous, full stop? It's for you to decide. You'd just be shifting that responsibility onto the GP. Look, John, I must go. You see, one of my patients goes out and shoots half a dozen passers-by. You throw up your hands and say, but you said he wasn't dangerous. Thanks for popping in. Doesn't help me, though, does it? I've still got to get them out alive. Mr. Rudyard! Here's the food you asked for. Well, most of the hardware seems to be in place. Right to show. Talking of which, you were good on the box the other night. Oh. You can't fear what you trust, and you can't trust what you fear. Elegant phrasing for a spontaneous thought. Well, near spontaneous, had a week's notice. <laughs> Touch gladiatorial, I thought you would call it. Makes good television. You serve on an ACPO committee with him, don't you? Yeah. What's that like? Worse. We don't have to watch our language. Mm. Can't say I know him very well. He did his senior command course before I took over as commandant. Not one of your Browns Hill boys. I've never showed favouritism to my Browns Hill boys. And you know it, Superintendent Stafford? Sir. And if I ever did, I can't anymore. I'm going up, John. They're making me chief HMI. Congratulations, Alan. They couldn't have picked a better man for it. I mean that. When did they tell you? Tuesday. Apart from Ellen, one or two close friends, you're the first I've told. Thanks. I really appreciate that. And everything else you've done for me. I know you helped get me reinstated. I've never thanked you properly for it. It's my other news you won't appreciate. 
your successor. Colin Fowler. Rudyard has the phone, sir. Point in answering if you're not going to talk. Switch off. <laughs> 